Well, I'm Dan Criswell. Just we farm, have a small farm up here in Marion, Mar County. And last spring, we was approached by a landlord that said that they was going to sell the farm, sell one of the farms that we farmed in a month. And we had a lot of fertilizer and seed and had sprayed it last fall and and was ready to you know start doing spring farming spring planting and and he said he was going to have the farm sale in a month and and it was kind of a shock to us we didn't have a written contract we just had a a handshake it had been handshake contract for for many many years so i got a hold of cy prettyman a uh, local farm bureau member here in marion county a uh, member of pork producers with us and he said go ahead and get a hold of Farm Bureau and he gave me the number to talk to Farm Bureau's attorney and so we kind of went from there and and then she got me in, in contact with Wright and Moore I think it is uh, Ryan Conklin and Andy Wecker you know they said that House Bill 397 had, had been taken you know been initiated and that they can't you know they just can't take a farm out from underneath you like that they have to give you ample notice and you know, so that come in to benefit us, benefit us a lot. Um, I guess that's kind of what I'd like to get out there is that, uh, you know, for the for the small farmer, uh, the family farms, you know, that there is Farm Bureau is working to benefit us. Hi, I'm Leah Curtis. I'm Policy Council and Senior Director of Member Engagement for the Ohio Farm Bureau. So we know a lot of people use handshake leases and have for a long time, but some of the issues that can arise with handshake leases are that there's no evidence of what two people have agreed to. So um, if questions arise later, it can be difficult to determine, you know, did we agree on a price? Did we agree on a time frame? Um, and then in addition to just not having the evidence is that we might have misunderstandings. Maybe you said one thing and I took that to mean, you know, A, but what you really meant was B. So having that, you know, handshake lease can sometimes create those types of issues. That being said, we know lots of people use them and we know they're very prevalent in agriculture. And so with House Bill 397, one of the goals was, try, was to try to address one major issue that often comes up, which is termination date. Um, while other issues like rental and things can come up too, termination can really be a problem, particularly when we might have land changing hands, maybe it goes from a parent to a child or someone passes away and it goes to an heir. Um, that can really cause confusion, particularly if you don't have anything written down. So House Bill 397 sets that standard termination date. It sets some basic rules for termination of a farm lease so that everybody can kind of be on the same page and we can have some uh, consistency and people can kind of know what's gonna happen. Now that being said, it's important to note that House Bill 397 also still allows you to agree to whatever you would like. Um, and so of course that should be done in writing, but if you don't like the September 1 termination date that's in the law, you can certainly pick a different date, a different method of termination, uh, and you can write that down and agree with, uh, you know, between you and the landlord or if you're the landlord between you and the tenant.